Ever wondered if God really exists, or if it's all just a human-made concept? It's a question that has intrigued humanity since the dawn of civilization. A question that has sparked countless debates, wars, and even revolutions. A question that, no matter which side you're on, deserves to be examined with respect and an open mind. Today we're going to delve into this grand question from a perspective that might be different from what you're used to. We're going to explore 10 reasons why one might not believe in God, from the age-old problem of evil to the paradox of omnipotence, from the multiplicity of religions to the silence of God, we'll dissect these compelling arguments with a critical eye. Remember, this isn't about convincing you of a particular viewpoint, it's about encouraging thought, dialogue, and understanding. So, are you ready to embark on this intellectual adventure? Let's dive into the 10 reasons one might not believe in God. First, the existence of evil and suffering in the world challenges the belief in a benevolent God. Imagine for a moment a world filled with pain, injustice, and despair. Now in this world we're told there is an all-powerful, all-loving deity watching over us. But if this deity is as loving and powerful as we're led to believe, why does suffering persist? This is the philosophical problem of evil. It's a question that has baffled thinkers and believers for centuries. If God is all-powerful, he could prevent all evil. If he is all-loving, he would want to prevent all evil. Yet evil exists. This contradiction is a major stumbling block for many when it comes to belief in God. It pits the existence of a loving, all-powerful deity against the harsh realities of our world. It begs the question, how can an all-loving and all-powerful God allow such suffering to exist? Second, Science offers alternate explanations for the origins and workings of the universe. Let's delve into this a bit more. We're all familiar with the Big Bang Theory, right? It's the prevailing cosmological model that explains how our universe expanded from a very high density and high temperature state. Now where does God fit into this scientific explanation? Well, the simple answer is, he doesn't necessarily have to. Then, we have the theory of evolution, a scientifically accepted explanation for the diversity of life on Earth. It suggests that all species of organisms arise and develop through natural selection of small, inherited variations that increase the individual's ability to compete, survive, and reproduce. Where in this process does divine intervention come into play? These scientific theories, while not disproving the existence of God, certainly provide alternative explanations for the phenomena traditionally attributed to a divine being. So could we just be a product of science and not divine intervention? Third, the multitude of religions and gods throughout history suggests human fabrication. Let's dive in and explore this a bit further. Over the course of human history, thousands of religions have come into existence, each with its own unique set of beliefs, gods, and doctrines. From the ancient Greeks and their pantheon of gods to the monotheistic religions of today, the variety is astounding. These religions, each claiming to hold the ultimate truth, often contradict one another. Some preach of a single, all-powerful god, while others believe in multiple deities. Some propose a cyclical view of life and death, reincarnation, while others propose a linear perspective with a definitive end. Now, if there is one absolute truth, one divine entity, how can there be so many differing interpretations? The sheer diversity of religious belief around the world and throughout history raises an eyebrow. It begs the question, could all these religions simply be human attempts to understand the world? Fourth, there's a lack of empirical evidence to support the existence of God. Now, empirical evidence is the information received through means that can be objectively verified. It's what makes science so reliable. We use empirical evidence to understand and explain the world around us from the simplest of phenomena to the most complex. But when it comes to God, we're left empty-handed. There's no physical or scientific proof that can objectively verify the existence of a deity. We have no scientific experiments that can demonstrate God's existence. No empirical data to analyze, no tangible proof to hold. It's like trying to catch smoke with your bare hands. Yet billions of people around the world base their entire lives, their moral compass, and their worldview on this unproven belief. As they say, absence of evidence is not evidence of absence, but it does make you think, doesn't it? Fifth, the power of indoctrination and societal pressure can lead to belief in God. This might sound familiar to many of us. Beliefs, especially religious ones, often get passed down through generations like family heirlooms. We're born into a certain faith, and it's expected that we'll follow suit. 
This is the power of indoctrination at work. But let's not forget the influence of societal pressure. Living in a community where a certain religion is dominant can exert a subtle yet profound influence on our belief systems. The fear of ostracization or the desire to fit in can lead us to adopt beliefs that we may not fully understand or agree with. This power of indoctrination and societal pressure can create a fog around our true beliefs and cloud our ability to question and think critically. It begs the question, are we believing because we truly believe or because we've been told to? Sixth, the paradox of omnipotence poses logical problems. Let's delve into this, shall we? The paradox of omnipotence is a philosophical conundrum that questions the very nature of an all-powerful being, such as God. It's a thought experiment that puts the idea of unlimited power under the microscope. Imagine a being with the power to do absolutely anything, even the logically impossible. Now, if this being is truly omnipotent, could it create a task so difficult that it cannot accomplish it? For instance, could it create a rock so heavy that even it cannot lift it? If it can create such a rock, then there is something it cannot do. Lift the rock. Conversely, if it cannot create the rock, then again there's something it cannot do. Either way, we stumble upon a logical contradiction. So, we're left with a question that seems to defy answer. If God is omnipotent, can he create a rock so heavy that even he cannot lift it? 7. Natural disasters and random calamities challenge the idea of a caring God. When we look at the world around us, we see a reality that's often harsh and unforgiving. Earthquakes, floods, hurricanes, wildfires. These are not isolated incidents, but recurring phenomena that cause immense suffering and loss. They strike indiscriminately, affecting the innocent and guilty alike, sparing neither the newborn nor the elderly. We're told that a benevolent deity watches over us, yet these disasters persist. If such a deity has the power to prevent these calamities, why do they persist? Is it a test of faith, as some suggest? But isn't faith supposed to be a shield, a protection from harm, and not a precursor to it? These questions challenge the traditional narrative of a caring and protective deity. They force us to ponder the paradox of divine benevolence in a world filled with random and often devastating calamities. Why would a loving God allow such disasters to occur? Eighth. The vast inequality in the world raises questions about divine justice. If we delve into the matter we see a world where disparities are a common theme. Wealth is unequally distributed with a small fraction of the population controlling the lion's share of resources. Poverty, famine, lack of education and health crises are rampant in certain parts of the world, while others enjoy the spoils of progress and development. What's more, innocent children are born into circumstances they did not choose, facing hardships and obstacles from the get-go. If there's a deity who is just and fair, wouldn't we expect a more balanced, equitable world? The existence of such inequality and injustice seems to challenge the very notion of divine justice. Indeed, one might argue that the world is a dynamic place, with ups and downs being part of the grand scheme of things. But the scale and persistence of inequalities we observe are hard to reconcile with the idea of a just and fair deity. Where is divine justice in a world filled with so much inequality? Ninth, the apparent silence of God in the face of suffering and prayers challenges belief. Imagine being in a time of crisis, crying out for help, only to be met with silence. This experience is far too common, causing many to question the existence of a benevolent deity. Consider the countless prayers that seem to go unanswered, the pleas for healing, for peace, for comfort, which often appear to fall on deaf ears. This perceived silence can be disheartening, leading to feelings of abandonment and doubt. There's also the issue of global suffering. From poverty to war, from natural disasters to pandemics, the world is filled with pain and hardship. Many wonder why an all-powerful and all-loving God would allow such suffering to persist without intervention. These questions are not meant to undermine anyone's faith, but rather to encourage open and thoughtful dialogue about the complexities of belief. In the end, the question remains, why does God remain silent when we need him the most? Finally, the tenth reason is the personal experience of many who feel they have not experienced God. This might seem subjective, but it's an important point to consider. Many people go through life without feeling any divine presence or intervention. They pray in their moments of despair, seek guidance during their struggles, but find no response. It's as if they're speaking to a void. Now some might argue that God works in mysterious ways that these unanswered prayers are part of a grand plan, but for those who don't feel a connection or see a purpose, this explanation doesn't hold water. Their reality is defined by their experiences, or in this case, the lack thereof. 
However, it's crucial to remember that this is not about disproving God or disrespecting those who believe. It's about understanding the reasons behind disbelief. To sum up, these are just some of the reasons that might lead to disbelief in God. It's a personal journey and everyone's path is unique. Remember, it's okay to question and seek your own truth.